Hello student, welcome back. It is module 2, lecture 3, Satellite Communication, MECE 106A, Shongita Roy, Assistant Professor, Electronics and Communication Engineering Department, Narula Institute of Technology. Content, Satellite Link Design, System Noise Temperature, Downlink Design, Domestic Satellite Design, Uplink Design, Downlink Design of Satellite Link for Specified Carrier to Noise Ratio. It is the content for two days, so we will start the session from here. So we have started the class. In the previous session, what we have studied, we will discuss those Initially, then we will go to our today's topic. The satellite link is essentially a radio link relay, much like the terrestrial microwave radio relay link, with the singular advantage of not requiring as many retransmitters as required in the terrestrial link. Transmission of signals over a line of sight communication, but since theoretically three equidistant satellites in geosynchronous orbit can effectively cover over 90% of the earth surface. The need for multiple retransmission is removed. So this is a concept, this is a uplink, this is downlink and this is to earth station and this is the satellite. So this is a transmitter, this is a receiver. So when it is transmitting, that is through feeder it is transmitting and this is the antenna and this is the receptive antenna corresponding feeder and corresponding receiver station. So effective isotropic radiated power, the signal which is transmitted from the antenna. So if the transmitter has a power of PTX, then there is a feeder law that is LFTX and ultimately transmitted power is PT. And this is the look angle that is pointing towards satellite or pointing to the antenna and with a gain of GT max. Similarly in the receiver section, G receiver max is the antenna gain of the receiver, PR is the transmit the received power in the antenna and this is the feeder loss and ultimately this is the noise temperature that is also called, calculated in case of receiver. That is another important thing that is associated with this that is path loss. So whenever the transmitter and receiver receiving the signal, transmitter is transmitting and receiver is receiving, there is a loss between this. And this loss, in case of earth, this loss is little bit of the lower side, whereas it is in between the earth station and the satellite then loss is huge because the distance cover has to upgrade. So as the distance is increases loss also increases. There are different types of loss associated with this. So it is showing how the receive power decreases with distance. So as the distance increases receive power also decreases. So this is the figure showing how there are different loss associated with the transmitter and receiver case where it is showing between earth station uh, means in the ground but it, the same thing will happen in case of satellite also. So there is line of sight signals and there is also different reflection, refraction, diffraction, scattering light also there. So ultimately the algebraic sum is coming over there. So though the line of sight signal may be strong, but due to this vector addition, the total signal gets deteriorated. So these are the antenna parameters that affects. Now radiated power, effective isotropic radiated power. Uplink and downlink power also we have calculated in the earlier days. The losses that is concerned that is attenuation of waves as they propagate through the atmosphere, losses in the transmitting and receiving equipment, 
depointing losses, polarization, mismatch losses also there and we have covered in the earlier days. Rain attenuation has a strong loss over the link. So how the rain attenuation with the elevation angle, this is the elevation angle, how it affects. So as the elevation angle is increases, so rain attenuation decreases. Frequency uh, reuse is an important factor because we, if we use the fre same frequency after, uh, with a particular distance again and again, then total bandwidth spectrum become less and it is very, uh, com for commercial purpose, it is very useful. But if we have to give separate frequency for separate uh, region, then it is very expensive. So frequency reuse techniques in cellular system is used over there so that efficiency get increased. So this is a concept, this is a satellite. So this is a rate, this is a particular frequency, this can be used in separate places. No problem is there but with a particular distance. So today we are going to start the topic noise power spectral density at the received input. Origin of noise. Noise consists of all unwanted contribution whose power adds to the unwanted carrier and wanted carrier power. It reduces the ability of the receiver to reproduce correctly the information content of the received wanted power in the carrier. The origins of the noise are as follows. The noise emitted by the natural sources of radiated located within the antenna reception area. Two, the noise generated by components in the receiving equipment. Carriers from transmitters other than those which it is wished to receive are also class, uh, classed as noise. The noise is described as interference. So this is the spectral density of white noise. So this is the required bandwidth and this is the noise level. And it is watt per hertz. Harmful noise power is that which occurs in the bandwidth B of the wanted modulated carrier. A popular noise model is that of white noise for which the power spectral density N0, this is the density N0, this level, watt per hertz is constant in the frequency band involved. The equivalent noise power N per watt captured by receiver with equivalent noise bandwidth Bn usually match to Bn, B is equal to Bn is given by noise is equal to N0 Bn. Real noise sources do not always have constant power spectral density but the model is convenient for representation of actual noise observed over a limited bandwidth. Noise temperature of a noise source. The noise temperature of a two-port noise source delivering an available noise power spectral density N0 is given by this. Definition of the noise temperature of a noise source. So this is a model, nothing but this is a model and this is a noise source and the physical temperature T if it is generated by this noise source then it will be given by N is equal to KTB, K is the Boltzmann constant, T is the temperature and B is the bandwidth and the Boltzmann constant value is given by over there represents the thermodynamic temperature of a resistance which delivers the same available noise power as the source under consideration. Available noise power is power delivered by the source to a device which is impedance match to the source. This is nothing but a model. Effective input noise temperature. The effective input noise temperature Te of a four port element is thermodynamic temperature resistance which placed at the input of an element assumed to be noise free establishes the same available noise power at the output of the element as the actual element without the noise source at the figure below. Te is thus a measure of the noise generated by the internal components of the four port element. The noise figure of this four-port element is the ratio of the total available noise power 
at the output of the element to the component of this power engaged by a source at the input of the element with the noise temperature equal to the reference temperature T0 is equal to 290 Kelvin. Assume that the element has a gain of G, a bandwidth of B is derived by a source of noise T0, the total power at the output is given by GK TE T plus T0 into B. The component of this power originating from the source is GK T0 B. The noise figure is thus F is equal to GK TE plus T0 B divided by GK T0 B is equal to T e plus T0 divided by T0 that is to 1 plus T e plus T0. This noise figure is usually quoted in decibel according to F dV is equal to 10 log F. So this is the noise figure versus noise temperature. So as the noise temperature increases, noise figure is also increases. This is shown by this figure. Effective input noise temperature of an attenuator. An attenuator is a four port element containing only passive components. All at temperature T attenuation which is generally the ambient temperature if L attenuation is the attenuation caused by this attenuator the effective input noise temperature of the attenuator is given by T E attenuator is equal to L attenuator minus 1 divided by T attenuator Kelvin. If T attenuator is equal to T0 the noise figure of the attenuator is given by F attenuator is equal to A attenuator. Effective input noise temperature of cascaded elements. Consider a chain of N four port elements in cascade. Each element I have power of GI is equal to 1 to N and input noise temperature Tij. The overall effective input noise temperature is given by this equation T is equal to T1 plus T2 by G1 plus T3 by G1, G2 and so on up to Gn minus 1. The noise figure is obtained from the equation F is equal to F1 plus F2 minus 1 by G1, F3 minus 1 divided by G1, G2 and up to Gn minus 1. Effective input noise temperature of a receiver. The effective input noise temperature TERx of the receiver can be expressed as TERx is equal to TLNA plus TMx by GLNA plus TIF divided by GLNA, GMx in Kelvin. Where those some, some these symbols are given over there, how it is coming. So TERx, this is the effective input noise temperature at the receiver is given by, this is uh, LNA, therefore this is TLNA, GLNA with a gain of this. And this is a mixer. So mixer, if it is a local oscillator in the down converter, so output in the again IF amplifier, it is going on. So in this output amplifier, in this amplifier, which is going, which is in the receiving side with the noise temperature TIF with a gain of GIF. So up, con, combining this, we are getting this equation. This is an example if low noise amplifier LNA is equal to T LNA is equal to 150 Kelvin, G LNA gain is 50 dB and mixer temperature is 850 Kelvin, then again G max is equal to 10 dB, L max 10 dB. If IF amplifier TIF is equal to 40 Kelvin, GIF is equal to 30 dB, it is given, all these values given. Example, for an example, hence the Receiver noise temperature will be calculated from this previous equation by putting this value we are getting this 150 Kelvin. Notice the benefit of high gain of the low noise amplifier which limits the noise temperature of the receiver to that of the low noise amplifier TLNA. Noise temperature of an antenna. An antenna picks up noise from radiating bodies with the radiation pattern of the antenna. The noise output from the antenna is a function of the direction in which it is pointing, its radiation pattern and the state of the surrounding environment. The antenna is assumed to be a noise source characterized by a noise temperature called the noise temperature of the antenna TAK. 
let T be theta and phi be the brightness temperature of a radiating body located in the direction theta phi where the gain of the antenna has a value of g theta phi. The noise temperature of the antenna is obtained by integrating the radiating bodies within the radiating pattern of the antenna. The noise temperature of the antenna is given by this equation. There are two cases to be considered. A satellite antenna, the uplink, the earth station antenna, the downlink. Noise temperature of a satellite antenna. The noise, temper the noise captured by the antenna is from the earth to from the outer space. The beam width of a satellite antenna is equal or less than the angle of view of the earth from the satellite that is 17.5 degree for a geostationary satellite. Under this condition, the major contribution is that from the earth. For a beam width of theta 3 dB of 17.5 degree, the antenna noise temperature depends on the frequency and the orbital position of the satellite. For a small width, the temperature depends on the frequency and the area covered. The, conti the continents radiate more noise than the ocean. And the, the below figure uh, is shown and it will be cleared from there. For a preliminary design, the value 290 Kelvin can be taken as a conservative value. The satellite antenna noise temperature for a global coverage as a function of the frequency and orbital position. This is the different satellite position and the weighted brightness temperature. So this is a different brightness temperature in the KU band. So the ocean has 150 Kelvin where different continents are different radiating temperature. So this is the African country 280 degree. This is India and this Asian countries are 270 Kelvin on an average. The seas are 150, 150 everywhere and this America is 260 and so on and this is the uh, radiating, how it is radiating brightness temperature it is shown from here. Obviously the lands are giving more radiating temperature than that of the water. Noise temperature of an earth station antenna, the downlink. The noise captured by the antenna consists of noise from the sky and noise due to the radiation from the earth. This figure shows this is the ground station, this is the sky and between ground and this is the sky but there is a rain is there so there is attenuating factor is over there. So this is clear sky and this is rainy condition. So there is an attenuation over there. Clear sky's condition. At a frequency greater than 2 gigahertz, the greatest contribution is that of the non-ionized region of the atmosphere which being an absorbent medium in a noisy source. In the absence of meteorological formation that is to clear sky, the antenna noise temperature contains contribution due to the sky and the surrounding ground. This figure shows. But in case of noise contribution is determined from the equation, this is given by this equation. And as a consequence, the noise contribution of the clear sky, this sky can be assimilated with the brightness temperature for the angle of elevation of the antenna. This is for clear sky as a frequency of function of the elevation angle. The brightness temperature for clear sky. So the if the sky is clear, then the brightness temperature changes with frequency. It is shown over there. As the frequency increases, brightness temperature also increases. But there is a sudden change in between frequency 20 to 25. Radiation from the ground in the vicinity of the earth station is captured by the side lobes of the antenna radiating pattern. So the following can be taken as a first approximation of this. So uh, for a la lateral lobes, Tg is equal to 290 Kelvin. 
and it is for a elevation angle less than 10 and it is 150 elevation angle between 10 degree to 0 degree 50k from 0 degree to 10 degree and Tg is equal to 10k for 0 degree to 90 degree and the antenna noise temperature is given by this equation Ta is equal to T sky plus T ground in Kelvin. Condition of rain. The antenna noise temperature increases during the presence of meteorological formation such as cloud and rain which constitute an absorbent and consequently emissive medium. Thus the antenna noise temperature becomes Ta is equal to T sky by Rn plus Tm into 1 minus 1 by Rn plus T ground where Rn is the attenuation due to rain and Tm is the mean thermodynamics temperature of the formation in question Tm a value of 275 Kelvin can be assumed this is a standard value so what we have studied that is the conclusion in conclusion the antenna noise temperature Ta is a function of the frequency the elevation angle the atmospheric condition for clear sky or rainy condition consequently the figure of merit of an earth station must be specified for a particular condition of frequency, elevation angle and atmospheric conditions. So this is all about this day. We are going to conclude the session. These are the references and thank you. We are concluding today's session.